everyone. Thanks so much for coming in today. We will get started in a few minutes at the top of the hour. Thank you. Um, so partnering with ALI for this series is Werner. Werner actively advocates for ladder safety and accident prevention through their range of innovative product solutions, in-person training, and online educational programs, like right now. Today's presentation is meant to be interactive. Throughout this presentation, we will be uh, taking questions from attendees using the Q&A feature found at the bottom of your screen, but we will answer all of those questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording with all attendees later this week, along with a PDF of the presentation. Uh, this recording, along with the three previous webinars, will be hosted on, or well, the, well, the last webinar and the upcoming two, will be hosted online at laddersafetymonth.com. And with that, I'll pass it over to Sev and Milt. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to present something that's really near and dear to our hearts, uh, which is obviously ladder safety and uh, working safely at heights. Uh, so introduction to myself, uh, I'm Seb Danielian, one of the job site safety and security managers uh, based out of the Los Angeles market, uh, covering the Southwest region. So if we can help with anything on site at a, you know, at one of your job sites uh, with uh, inspecting ladders, uh, giving training like this in person, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I also have Milt uh, Deasis, my counterpart. Milt, can you introduce yourself? Seb, thank you very much, man. Much appreciated. And and uh, Stephanie, you got a radio voice. I don't know if you know that or not, but that's a great radio <laughs> voice you got going. Hey, uh, my name is Milt Deasis. I'm based out of Seattle, Washington. I cover the Northwest market from basically Denver, Colorado, west through Utah and up through Oregon and Washington, Montana and so forth. And just like what Sev said, if you need any help with uh, training, inspection of ladders or fall protection, feel free to reach out to us any moment or any Warner teammate. We'd be more than happy to help you out. And again, Sev, thank you very much for kicking this off, bud. Back to you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll uh, leave some time at the end for Q&A, but we're just going to dive into the presentation here. Uh, so for the purpose of today's uh, to today's webinar, we're going to cover ladder inspection, proper handling, and setup. And we're going to focus primarily on the A-frame ladders and extension ladders. And I know last week's presentation involved uh, selecting the right ladder. So just a recap on that real quick. Uh, we want to make sure we pick the right ladder for the correct height. And then we want to make sure we pick their ladder with for the uh, right, uh, the correct uh, duty rating. So again, that's my weight and any product that I'm going to carry up there with me. But once we do pick the right ladder, now we want to make sure that we inspect the ladder, install the ladder correctly, so uh, we can avoid any kind of accidents or injuries. Okay. So when it comes to inspecting a ladder, we want to inspect the ladder every time we use that ladder. So that not not once a day, just every time I pick up that ladder and I'm going to use it in the field, I want to make sure I inspect the ladder. And really, the inspecting the ladder consists of going through all the different components of a ladder to make sure everything is in good working order. So typically we'll start with, uh, and we have a couple different methods of how we inspect the ladder, but we just wanna make sure we cover the main components first and then we'll go into different methods as well. So when I look at a ladder, the first thing I wanna look at are the rails. So if I, which are uh, the rails right here, obviously. So if there's any cracking, any kind of uh, you know discoloration, if I could take a, a glove and rub my hand against the rail and I start to see uh, kind of dust, that's essentially the fiberglass blooming. So that the, the ladder at that point has already started um, you know, a, a degradation process. So we wanna potentially pull that ladder out. Uh, we also wanna look at the, the rungs or, or, or the steps of the ladder. Uh, if there's any deformation, if they're bent, cracked, anything like that, uh, we, we, we wanna consider taking that ladder out of service. Also the back rungs here, we wanna make sure those are, are nice and straight. A, a, a standard A-frame ladder uh, as we all know, those back, uh, back rungs are not steps. Um, there are ladders meant for that application, but if you see in a standard A-frame ladder that those are bent, typically that means someone accidentally stepped on it or whatever the case may be. But if those are bent, that's gonna jeopardize the integrity of that ladder. And we wanna, put, and we wanna pull that out of service. Next, we wanna look at the spreader bars, uh, these right here. If the spreaders, if you can walk by one of those spreaders and tap it with one finger and it flies up, that means that those, the, the integrity of those um, might be compromised and we wanna potentially pull those out of service. Uh, the next thing we wanna look at are the stickers or the labels on the ladder, which are critical. So what these uh, labels do, particularly the duty rating ladder, that tells us A, what 
what that ladder is rated for, right? So it's going to tell me, is it rated for 300 pounds, 375 pounds, et cetera. And, and that's critical because that tells me what that ladder can support. So if it's a 370 pound, uh, 75 pound rated ladder, then I need to make sure that my body weight and any product that I take up there with me, uh, whether it's drills, batteries, you name it, um, all of that adds to my body weight. And I got to take that all into consideration, right? So if that sticker is missing and we can't do it based solely on the color of the ladder, uh, uh, we have to take that ladder out of service and those stickers are replaceable, right? So we just got to make sure we have the correct duty rating sticker. And then, and then the sticker above that, which has all the safety information of how to properly use a ladder. We need to make sure that that is also present, okay? Uh, and then lastly, working our way down, we wanna look at the feet of the ladder, make sure that the rubber padding is there, that it's all even. Uh, and if those aren't there, uh, again, we need to pull that ladder out and uh, potentially have that uh, replaced or um, you know have it serviced. And then also we wanna look at the rivets of the ladder, right? So if any of the rivets going up the ladder are missing, uh, we wanna pull that ladder out of service because that's gonna compromise uh, the ladder itself. And if any of those rivets are missing, we do not recommend or uh, we cannot, um, you know, use zip ties or anything like that uh, to fix that ladder. It's got to, the ladder's got to be used how it comes from the manufacturer. Okay. Um, moving on to extension ladders, really the, the same concept applies with the extension ladders as far as the, the, the fiberglass, the rails, making sure that's all in good working order. A couple of things obviously unique to the extension ladder. Uh, number one is the pulley system. Make sure the pulley system is in good work in order. Make sure the rope is in good work in order. And then the lock assembly system, right? As you're raising the ladder, we want to make sure that mechanism is working properly because that's what's going to keep the ladder in place as you're climbing up and prevent it from slamming down. Okay. So that's really a high level what to look for when you're doing a ladder inspection. Now we're going to talk about a few methods. Okay. So one of the uh, Kind of the three methods that, that we look at is uh, again as we mentioned walking down the ladder so you want to start essentially from the top of the ladder right the, the 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 plastic piece that holds the entire ladder together make sure that's not cracked that's in good work in order and, and then you want to examine the ladder carefully for any damaged or missing parts that we just discussed and then again we never want to use a bent or damaged ladder or one that's been exposed to excessive heat which creates that degradation of the fiberglass and also uh, any kind of acidic material and with full uh, talk about that in a few slides here. Then uh, we also recommend laying the ladder down and you wanna check to make sure that the rails are not cracked, no splitting, no fraying. Uh, you wanna make sure the rungs again, aren't cracked that, you know, obviously you don't have any rungs missing, that rungs aren't bent. And then again, the when you lay the ladder down, the good thing about that is you can clearly see the foot pads and you wanna make sure again, that those are not missing. And then lastly, we wanna lift the ladder up. We wanna check uh, that the top of the ladder again is not cracked. Uh, we want to check the spreaders, as we mentioned, make sure they're nice and sturdy, um, make sure all the components are intact and working properly. And again, as we mentioned, super important to make sure that the labels are A, present and B, legible. OK, and that's really, uh, you know, this can take a matter of uh, 30 to 60 seconds, but at least it gives us a peace of mind each time that we use that ladder to make sure it's in good working order. OK, again, the lay it down process, as we just discussed, we want to lay the ladder down. Uh, look at the feet of the ladder. Make sure, again, this is a, a really good looking ladder here, right? The, the, the feet look good and then we can go ahead and use that ladder. Okay, and then the lift up process, again, just make sure the spreaders are in good working order. And when we talk about extension ladders, uh, the, the fly section, make sure it, it works properly. And, and every time you lift that ladder each rung, you wanna make sure it's clicking into place as you're lifting the ladder up, okay? So if we, do have a ladder, and here is a picture of obviously the one on the left, the green ladder there, uh, where clearly the, the 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 rung has been damaged. If we're going to pull these ladders out of service, we need to make sure that a uh, we put them in a secure location um, that they cannot be accessed, so someone doesn't accidentally uh, pull that ladder out and use it. Uh, so we want to use a lockout tagout method, right? Um, you know, typically customers will, uh, you know, we've seen zip tie the ladder with the, 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 the label on there. So if someone were to grab that ladder accidentally and try to open it, uh, they can open it, right? And then, and then we never wanna take a ladder that's damaged and just throw it in the garbage. We wanna make sure we dispose of that ladder, whether it's cutting it down the middle or whatever the case is. We just wanna make sure that no one uh, you know, goes through your trash and finds a, 
a ladder that they can then potentially use and harm themselves. Okay. So one really nice thing that we have, I mean, out of several nice things on Werner's website is we have a real nice and easy inspection sheet uh, covering, uh, well, this particular one covers step ladder. So whether that's the uh, standard A-frame ladder, uh, a podium ladder, uh, or a lean safe ladder, uh, kind of walks you step by step of what to look for, right? So we, we, we look at the steps and it tells you if, uh, you know, if it's not loose, not cracked or not bent, if you hit no to all those, perfect. We'll move on to the next thing. So again, we're going to check the steps, the rails, the labels, the, the pail shelf, the top, the spreader, uh, general, right? So is there any rust, any corrosion? Uh, are there any loose parts that we're seeing? And then uh, other, so any of the bracing, uh, the shoes or the rivet. So if any of that we check a yes to, then we got to pull that ladder out of service and figure out, can this be replaced or do we need to discard and get a new uh, a new ladder, okay? And, and we have a similar sheet to this for extension ladders as well. And again, that's on warnerco.com. If you go to the climbing section under resources, you'll find uh, this uh, inspection sheet on there for ease of use. And you can obviously print it out and, and use it uh, on your site, okay? A proper land, a uh, proper handling of a ladder. Uh, we always want to carry a ladder, like the gentleman on the left there, uh, kind of center balance the ladder. So have the ladder kind of pick it up from the middle and then have it resting on your shoulder. That's the proper way to carry a ladder. Now, as we know for uh, extension ladders, the longer the ladders get, obviously the heavier they get. So if you're working with a, uh, a 30, a 32, uh, anything, any longer extension ladder, best practice, uh, have two people, right? One person carry each end just to save that uh, wear on your back. Um, when it comes to, to uh, transporting a ladder, uh, we also all, we always want to make sure uh, the ladder is properly secured. So this gentleman here is putting it on top of a ladder rack. If you're going to put it in the bed of your truck, like if it's a six foot ladder, we just want to make sure it's properly uh, uh, tied down with either like a ratchet strap or some type of rope uh, to make sure uh, that it doesn't go flying. Because uh, I'm sure we've all seen uh, you know ladders on the freeway or uh, you know, someone uh, hadn't tied it down properly. So we really want to avoid that if possible. Um, and then lastly, uh, make sure we don't drag our ladders when we're uh, moving them because uh, dragging the ladder like this picture here with the X on it, um, that's going to damage the feet of the ladder. And then obviously don't drop your ladder because that'll uh, harm the fiberglass or, or if it's an aluminum ladder, um, you're exposing yourself to having that ladder being bent if we're dropping it uh, between use. Extension ladders, this is obviously a, a critical part of using an extension ladder is, is properly setting it up. So we'll just walk through this step-by-step. Step. So you always wanna lean the ladder up against the, the, the base of the building or, or, or whatever you're gonna be climbing. You're gonna move the ladder away from the building to get it to a proper angle. And this is super important, right? We wanna have the ladder at, at approximately a 75 degree angle away from the building or a four to one. So the gentleman here, He's standing with the feet of his uh, with the with his feet to the feet of the ladder, and as he extends his arms out, he should be able to reach that ladder, and that's typically uh, the the angle we want the extension ladder to be at. And then uh, we call it a, a four to one ratio, right? So he wants to extend the ladder, uh, have it at a four to one ratio, and then have uh, in the picture there that 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 you can see, you want to have the top of the ladder be three feet above. Uh, the, the roof of the surface that you're going to climb onto. So super critical that we do this uh, the right way when we're climbing an extension ladder. And we'll talk about the, the do's and don'ts in just a second here. Um, when it comes to the feet of a ladder, ideally, if it's a, a grassy situation, like the first picture there, um, you want to make sure um, that the stakes are tied down, right? So to prevent it from slipping or uh, use a spur plate if it's a penetrable surface and make sure it's firmly in there. Um, if it's a flat, smooth surface like the, the brown ladder there, uh, we want to make sure that both feet are firmly on the ground uh, level. And we want to make sure if, uh, for it not to be a, a, a slippery surface, right? Because the last thing you want to do is have, have that ladder slip from under you uh, as you're climbing it. And then lastly, the, the picture on the right there, uh, we want to try to tie off the ladder at the roof um, or, or a firm gutter or something like that to really keep that ladder in place as we're going up and down the ladder. Okay. So a couple of the, of the don'ts, right? A couple of the wrong ways to set up and use a ladder. Um, don't place the base of the ladder too close to the building, what we were just talking about. So if we place it too close to the building, like the picture here on the left, um, there, there can be a possibility of that ladder as you're climbing up, 
to tip backwards like that picture there if we tilt the ladder too far out so if you're too far away as you're climbing the ladder there's a potential for the ladder to slip and fall so either way not a good thing right so we want to make sure we're using the ladder properly um, the next picture here, we never want to position, especially for an A-frame ladder, but an extension as well, obviously. Uh, we never want to position the ladder by a door um, where there's work vehicles. Really want to be in a place where I know I can use this ladder without someone accidentally uh, bumping into it, or in this picture here, opening a door and bumping into the ladder and potentially throwing me off of it. Okay. Um, the third picture there, we, we, we never want to use a ladder in a horizontal position, obviously, right? Uh, there are products that are, you know, plank scaffolding uh, that are meant for that application. A standard extension or A-frame ladder is not meant for that application, right? So we do not want to do that. And then we never want to drop or throw a ladder. Again, we already talked about that, but that's going to damage the ladder. It's going to weaken the ladder and it can cause serious injury to either yourself or someone if they don't see the ladder and, and uh, you know, it's being thrown, right? So one really important thing, uh, one really important thing too, excuse me, is as we're using extension ladders, um, if, if you're on an uneven surface, uh, we don't want to use bricks. We don't want to use, you know, pieces of wood uh, to create an even ground. Um, we don't want to do that. So anytime we're going to use a ladder, we want to make sure it's on, a, on an even ground, or if it's not, we want to, uh, you know, stake the, the, the feet in, or we do, uh, you know, have accessories that are meant for uneven surfaces, uh, but you never want to just put a piece of wood or a two by four or, or a brick or whatever to try to even out that surface because that could potentially slip out, right? As you're using the ladder. Um, we never want to cut anything on the ladder, right? Like that second picture there where, uh, you know, where uh, the gentleman is using a Sawzall to, to, to cut some piping. You know, if, if that Sawzall slips and it, and it cuts into the, the rail of the ladder, now we can't use that ladder anymore, right? So we don't want to have that application. Um, the next picture over, uh, we never want to place the ladder on a slippery surface or an uneven ground. Uh, we just want to, again, make sure we have a clean surface to place our ladder. And then lastly, um, we never want to use the ladder in an area where there could be fire, acid, uh, really any strong chemicals that can uh, damage or weaken the, the ladder. And then some additional safety tips. Uh, we want to make sure that the ladder is, is promptly cleaned. So if you do have a spill or something drips on your ladder, we just want to make sure it's all, uh, clean from oil, paint, uh, really anything that, that could start to degradate the ladder. Uh, we want to make sure that's all clean. Uh, we want to keep our ladders in good working condition. We want to, um, especially for like a, an extension ladder, make sure it's clean, uh, lubricated, so all the parts are moving nicely. Uh, and then on the A-frame ladders, make sure the spreaders look good, the hinges look good and then the locks and pulleys for uh, the extension ladder as well. Uh, when it comes to what we wear, right, our shoes, we want to make sure we're wearing uh, non-slip shoes, uh, make sure that the, 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 the soles of our shoes are clean from any mud or oil or really anything slippery um, that can cause us to potentially lose our balance. And then lastly, we want to make sure that we're using uh, the correct tool for the job, right? So as we mentioned in the previous slide about putting a brick or a piece of wood or something, uh, you know, we don't want to do that. So this application here that we see, uh, it, that's an accessory from Warner um, that's being used to uh, basically work on an uneven surface like a staircase um, in, in this example here. So thank you so much again uh, for allowing us this time to go over proper ladder inspection and how to set up a ladder correctly. Uh, we want to open it up for a Q&A, any questions that you guys might have. And again, really appreciate your time. And Milton, I uh, we'll try our best to answer all your questions. Uh, and if uh, we don't have the answer, we'll get the answer for you. So really appreciate your time. So uh, just so everybody knows, uh, you can ans you can ans ans you can ask questions uh, in the chat or you can type them in the Q&A box. Uh, it's a little two speech bubbles uh, at the bottom of your Zoom webinar toolbar. But we do have a couple of questions um, that have come through already. So uh, first question is from Greg. Greg asks, you mentioned that a ladder should not be used if it's been exposed to excessive heat. Can you define excessive? Um, that's a, so really, if you see um, a lot of uh, color degradation, um, or uh, like I mentioned, if you can take a, if it's a fiberglass ladder, and if you, um, you know, have a glove on and you uh, rub the ladder, you see a lot of uh, that uh, fiberglass that comes off. Um, that's when we need to pull the ladder out. Milt, is there anything else we can add to that or? Yes, sir, there is. So the degree, 
if I can say that word properly, sorry, excessive heat would be 200 degrees and above on fiberglass ladders. Does that answer the question, I hope? I hope so. Um, so, but we've answered, we've answered it at least. Oh, wow, here comes all the questions. They're coming, they're coming all in. Okay, so uh, Greg also had another question. Greg uh, asked, uh, I am not certain what a spur plate is on an extension ladder. Can you please describe? A spur plate, yeah, let me go back to that. Can you also see the presentation? Yep. Okay. So the spur plate is essentially the, the plate uh, or, 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 or the part of the foot that you can stake into the front. Got it. All right. So I hope that answered that question for you, Greg. And then, all right. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. The questions are coming through everywhere. So Rick had a question. Rick's question was, does fiberglass have a life expectancy? Mm. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I can find that out for you. I, I know, uh, Mill, do, do you know the answer to, to that one? I know as long as it passes the inspection, right? That's correct. Um, Just as long as it's, it, it um, passes the ins inspection. Uh, for that ladder, uh, just like you were mentioning, anything exposed to heat and oils. And, you know, when you're actually inspecting your ladder, always use a glove, like Sev had mentioned. And a lot of times what you can feel, you can feel the fiberglass going into the glove. So that's, that's why you always wear that glove when you wipe up and down that, that surface of the, of the rails. So um, that's the way you can tell. There is no real marker, I would say, for a life expectancy of, of a ladder. Uh, most of it's depending on how it's stored, um, how it's handled, and how it's secured on top of your truck or rig. Um, that's going to determine the life expectancy. Great. Awesome. Okay. We've got all these questions. We've got a lot of people. Okay. So a lot of people are mentioning things about that, just so I can put this out in the air so people can stop writing it in the chat. Um, I just want to remind everybody that this is being recorded and, um, and last week's recording was recorded and we can provide the copy of the slides with the recording when it is released. And you can find that when it is released on nationalladdersafetymonth.com. I also put this in the chat, just so you know, we probably will not be sending out in, um, the, the presentation and the recordings to people individually, but just so you know, you can get it there. Yes, and I'm gonna put a link to the recording, uh, two recordings right in the chat. So if you wanna go see them, that's where they are. Click that link, everybody. So let's get back to questions. So we got Rick's. And then we're going to go back to the questions and answers. Steve has a question. Steve's question says, can you reseal or fix a ladder where the fiberglass has started to be exposed? Um, <clears throat> I know on, on, on our end, we don't uh, recommend altering the ladder in any way um, after uh, it leaves the manufacturer. Uh, so on the Warner side, um, I, I, I want to say no. Milt, uh, do you want to chime in on that too? Yeah, you're exactly correct. So there's, yeah, once it's been, if it's a ladder has been cracked and you're trying to reseal it or fix it, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, it's, a, it's against the manufacturer suggested guidelines there. So no, we do not want to reseal it or fix a ladder. Okay. And our next question is from Steve. Steve asks, if you cannot, if you cannot secure the ladder, is a person required to hold the ladder? Mill, do you know the answer to that one? That um, I'm, I'm not sure on that one. It depends on what the side, the length of the ladder is, and a lot of your general contractors that are out there are going to have something specific that's written into the uh, safety guidelines for that job site specifically. Um, but there is nothing right now that states that it must be secured um, uh, for if, for an A-frame ladder or an extension ladder. Uh, it is different state by state as well. We're talking this is a national call here. You might want to check with your local state and find out what those regulations are. But from uh, our point of view, yes, we would like to see a, a secured ladder, uh, especially when you're working with what, I mean, 30 plus foot ladders that are out there, you definitely want to have those secured. Always have a spot, good for ladders and for lifting weights. Um, another question from Emmanuel. Emmanuel says, can you use two of those ladder accessories for the extension ladder at the same time? Uh, yes, I believe you can. But if you have one side that's already on an even surface, then you would just need the one side to even it out. Okay. 
All right. Another question has come through from George. George's question um, asks, are you, or like, is Warner, are you the only one that replaces labels for ladders? I don't know about the other manufacturers. Um, uh, we obviously do, um, but I, I would, I don't know. I, I, as far as other manufacturers, I'm not certain. Yeah. And another label related question. Um, Kevin asks, how can you tell if the appropriate stickers are on the correct ladders? So in, uh, if you go to warnerco.com, um, you can see uh, the labels on the ladders, or you can please reach out to any one of us, any one of us, and we'll help you with that. So the duty rating is, is, the, is critical, and then the uh, safety instructions uh, need to be on the ladder. And again, it varies by manufacturer, where they place them and all that. Um, but if you can give us a call, we'd be more than happy to help you out on that. Awesome. Awesome. I'd also like to point out, please have the SKU number of that ladder, if possible, so that we can trace back to our product team and, and get you the appropriate uh, labels. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right. Um, all right. Sorry, I'm like trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to check the chat and check everything else. And here comes another question from Antonianetta. Uh, Antonianetta's question says, does each manufacturer have their own labels is, or are there generic labels that can be used when they've worn out? Um, that's a great question. I know we have our own labels. I, I, I don't know if, the, if that's across the board, if you can mix and match which I believe the answer is no, because each ladder manufacturer has their own uh, duty ratings um, as far as, or I mean, their own uh, labels. So uh, I, 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 I really don't think so. But, okay. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I learned last week that there are duty ratings and Warner <laughs> has duty ratings for ladders yeah, and right. their colors. I knew that. Right, knew right. That. <laughs> All right. And then George has another question. George's question is, do you, can, do you or can you order the labels on your website? Yeah, uh, it, it would typically be through one of the uh, distribution partners. So we don't uh, you know, sell anything directly. So it would be through one of the distribution partners. Got it, okay. All right, all right. Oh, somebody else. All righty, cool. All right, so with that, I'm gonna see any other questions? I'm gonna give people a minute to type and I'll keep an eye out in the chat and in Q&A because this is a great discussion, y'all keep it up. Yes, Aldo, Aldo has a question. Yes, let's go. Uh, Aldo's question is, uh, please explain type one, type one A and type one double A. So that's just the different duty ratings. So type, and I'm gonna actually pull out my catalog. Uh, type uh, milk. Do, do you mind jumping in on that real quick while I get the catalog? Yeah, so your type 1, type 1A, and type 1AA are going to be your duty ratings that are out there. And Seb's going to go over that. with It's, it's, it's inside the catalog, so it's going to be directly um, aligned with how strong that ladder is. Exactly. So so your type, uh, type uh, 1A is going to be uh, a 300-pound rated ladder. Uh, type one uh, AA is going to be 375 and then um, 250. And then uh, so it starts at 220 to 225 and then 250, 300 and 375. Those are the four duty ratings um, that we have. And it's uh, if you ever get a chance to get one of our catalogs, oh, can't really see it, but it, it, it's right there. It's on our website as well. And uh... Antonio Anish's question is, uh, how do we know who your distribution partners are? That's um, really whoever your company buys um, your consumables ladders from. So uh, it could be one of, um, you know, the uh, big box stores. It could be one of the professional, um, you know, suppliers, uh, really wherever you get your product from. And, and, and if you don't know where to go for that, again, please reach out to, uh, to Warner Co. And based on your zip code, we can make a few recommendations of who uh, is a stopping, uh, stocking Warner distributor. Got it. Nice. All right. George's question. Uh, it's a question about ladders on trucks. George says, I see ladders on trucks all the time. Is there a proper way to secure them? Yeah. So a couple of ways. So um, let me see if I can get back to that picture here. Give me one second. So if you have a, a ladder rack, ideally, right, just uh, make sure it's on there securely and then strap down uh, using either, a, a, you know, I, I typically use like a ratchet strap 
just somewhere to make sure it's secure on there. Or if you're going to have it in the bed of your uh, of your truck, and if it's a smaller ladder, um, you want to uh, again like I have a Silverado, so it has the hooks that I can hook a strap onto, uh, just to make sure it's secure uh, as I'm driving. So, great, great point there, Sev. Also, you want to make sure that that fly on that extension ladder does not fly out while you're driving it. So yep. it's always a great idea and a great practice to make sure that those rungs are strapped together. Uh, yep. from the fly and then the bottom of the ladder too as well so it's not flying out on you. Yep, well said, Mel. Thank you. Biggest fear. Biggest fear to see a ladder fly off the back of a truck. It's scary. We... <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's yeah. scary. Um, so I know we don't have anything else in the in the Q&A or the chat. Uh, I'll do just say thank you. So I say thank you to you too. Uh, so with that, um, yeah, that's all we've got. Anybody, any other questions? I'll hold out for another... 45 seconds. Thank you for the comment. Safety, Dave. Oh, oh George has a question. George, is this a question or a comment? George's question, maybe comment is in New Mexico, is it bad to always, is it bad to leave like ladders always on your truck? I don't know. Yeah, so I, yeah that's a great question. So anywhere, so you know, I'm in Southern California. So uh, in like Kern County or Mojave or those areas that it gets super hot. Um, yeah. Uh, if you can uh, to store your ladder in a, um, in a um, somewhere, obviously somewhere secure, but if you can secure it indoors, kind of out of the elements, um, that would really be uh, ideal for the, uh, the life of the ladder. Cause if it's constantly under the sun, it's just gonna, you know, the ladder is going to take a beating and uh, especially with fiberglass, um, if there's constant sun on it somewhere like New Mexico, for example, that gets really hot, um, that's definitely going to, uh, you know, start uh, harm, harming the uh, fiberglass. Okay. That's yeah, so cool and dry, right? So if it's an aluminum ladder, like rain isn't going to help, right? So if we can keep it in a cool, dry place, that's uh, the ideal storage. Okay, George, George's follow-up question is, is there an OSHA standard for proper ladder storage? Uh, I don't know for if New Mexico um, has a specific one. Um, not that I'm aware of, just as, as long as it's secure. Um, Milt, do you know anything with OSHA in particular uh, for ladder storage? I do not know that answer and we can definitely look it up. Yeah, we can look that one up. I don't think they're, well, I, again, I'm, I, I'm not sure, but we can look into that for you. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So George, George followed up and said it inside a building, but I, I guess assume that the answer is still the same. You'd have to look it up, especially because it's, it, that would probably be state specific. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So oh. uh, obviously with OSHA, you have, you know, different uh, states have their own interpretation of things. So yeah, definitely look it up by state. Yeah. Well, with that, it seems like we've reached a nice, like we've slowed down. It's a chill stopping point. I'm kind of vamping to make sure nobody's typing. <laughs> just want to make sure that nothing's coming through. I, I do have an answer for you on the, there is, uh, as far as OSHA requiring storage for your ladder, it says OSHA generally instructs employers to follow manufacturer recommendations concerning the safety storage and maintenance of the equipment of the ladder. It says contact the ladder manufacturer or go to their website. So there is no OSHA requirement for, for ladder storage. Got it. So let's do what Warner tells you. No. All right. So now we know. Okay. So with that, y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you so much. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I want to thank you. Uh, thank the great discussion, great comments and chat. Thank you for Q and A. And I want to. Uh, hi, Matthew. Uh, just uh, just to reiterate, uh, we will uh, make the the PowerPoint slides and the recording available. Um, on the link linked above uh, on laddersafetymonth.com with uh, right there. So when we do post it, you can find it there, uh, bookmark that. Um, but also just got to follow up, all registered attendees will get an email with recordings in the PowerPoint. So keep an eye out on that. And if you don't get it, uh, there will be a way for you to reach out and let us know. Um, 
So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And I want to thank Sev and Milt for sharing their expertise with us. We really do hope that you've enjoyed this week's Ladder Safety Webinar Series and found safety best practices to use on the job and at home. You can find the recording of each webinar in the series at Ladder Safety Series online at LadderSafetyMonth.com and also in that link I put in the chat, along with additional safety resources. And with that, uh, I want to say thank you again to Warner for sponsoring the series and thank all of you for joining us and being so engaged. Happy, ladder, happy National Ladder Safety Month. Say that three times fast. And we're looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.